Good evening. So we're going to finish up our 12-part study of the book of Proverbs, so if you want to go there. So tonight we're going to talk how to be healthy, how to be healthy. Uh, this is not a name it, claim it, uh, prosperity gospel message. This is Solomon telling his son that there's certain things you can do uh, to help you uh, in your life, and then this one is how to be healthy. Uh, I, I'm sure I mentioned this before, but if I failed to mention it, I'll mention it tonight. None of these studies that we've done out of the 12 are exhaustive, meaning that every verse in Proverbs we have used it has to do with that situation. So when you look at them tonight, don't think, well, there's 12 verses or whatever. That's not the situation. So, But in Proverbs uh, <coughs> chapter 3, we find these two verses, verses 7 and 8. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. And turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. The word refreshment there means medicine. It'll be medicine to your bones. So number one, right living brings health. Right living brings health. Uh, if you look at the verses, uh, Solomon said, don't be wise in your own eyes. All of us know somebody like that, and all of us have probably been like that at times when we think we're the smartest thing that ever hit town. Then number two on the list was fear the Lord. That's the reverence of God. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. And then number three was turn away from evil. We find three things right there in verse seven that Solomon tells his son that he needs to pay attention to. And he said, if you do, verse eight, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment or medicine to your bones. So what he's basically saying here is to put God first, avoid evil, and use godly wisdom, and it will bring you health. I am sure that you, uh, if you've been on earth very long, uh, you realize that right living does affect your health. The second thing that we want to look at is in Proverbs 4, chapter 23, where Solomon wrote, Keep your heart with all uh, vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. So number two, self-protection encourages help. Self-protection encourages help. He says, keep your heart or guard your heart with all vigilance. Uh, excuse me, with all vigilance, I'm sorry. Uh, and for it, from it flows the springs of life. So guarding our heart. Now, it's not talking about the muscle in your chest that's beating. It's, of course, talking about the heart of man or, or the mind even. And so we need to guard it. We all know in the early days of the computer business, they used to say, garbage in and garbage out. And that really is how it works with our, with our minds. Uh, if we don't guard our minds, uh, then, of course, we take in everything, whether, we, whether it's truth or not. I um, was talking to somebody today and said, I would just like to hear somebody tell the truth. And I would agree with that because we don't have that much in our society anymore. But guarding our mind... Uh, will produce happiness and healthiness. So it's something that the New Testament speaks a lot about, about uh, you know guarding our mind, guarding our heart, um, because the Lord knew uh, that it was going to be a problem. And of course, remember the little song we used to sing, uh, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little tongue what you say, be careful little feet where you go. That little song probably has more validity right here in chapter 4, verse 23, than probably anything else. If we're not careful, if we don't protect ourselves, uh, of course, we, get, we will get into health issues. The third one comes from Proverbs eleven seventeen, where it says, A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. Number three, kindness leads to a healthy life. Kindness leads to a healthy life. It's interesting how the Bible tells us that just the way we respond to people and act towards people affects our health, who we are. Uh, it says uh, it, it will benefit us. It will benefit us. Kindness goes a long way toward uh, how others perceive us, but kindness also goes a long way in benefit, benefiting our own uh, health. You realize that when you're kind to people, you can be more relaxed, more laid back. And we all know in our world today that Stress is like the number one heart attack problem. Uh, so obviously, when we're not kind, 
according to verse 17, a cruel man hurts himself. So we bring stress, we bring problems, we bring people that are angry into our life and everything else if we're not kind. The fourth one is in Proverbs 12, 18. There's one whose rash words are like a sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Wisdom, number four, delivers healing in stress times. Wisdom delivers healing in stress times. So when we're in a stressful conversation, rash words are, according to the scripture, are equal to stabbing somebody. Now, we all know so often that our first response or whatever we say immediately when we're faced with a struggle or a trial or, 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 or an angry person even, our response uh, really affects the whole situation. So if somebody's very, very angry with us and they you know, start to attack us verbally, uh, you know, telling them they're a wimp and a wuss and whatever else isn't going to like downplay it. It's only going to encourage it. That's where wisdom comes in. So according to verse 18, that when we use rash words, we're just like we're stabbing somebody. But it says the one who speaks wisely brings healing. You know, the book of Proverbs has a lot of verses that talk about the way we talk. A lot of scripture in the book of Proverbs talks about the way we talk. Actually, a lot of scripture in the Bible, but Proverbs has a lot of them. Okay, verse uh, 17 in chapter 13 says, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful envoy brings healing. Number five, faithfulness brings healing. Faithfulness brings healing. So it says a wicked messenger. That's, that's a messenger not giving the truth, not telling the whole thing. And so we will call them the liar, okay? So a liar, if you uh, know anybody that is a, a continual habitual liar, they are always lying to cover up the tracks from their previous lie. It just is it's an ongoing thing and it never ends. And so they're always worried about somebody finding out the truth. But the one who delivers the true message in verse uh, 17 uh, brings healing. And so the person who is faithful with, the, with, with what they're doing, the, the message they deliver or their actions or whatever, brings healing. The other person is constantly looking for a cover-up for whatever it is he's dealing with. Number six, Proverbs 14.30, A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. So the first thing is, uh, look at the verse, a tranquil, uh, that means a spiritually healthy heart, okay? Somebody whose heart is right with God gives life to the flesh, but envy, another word for envy is jealousy, okay? Jealousy makes the bones rot. Number six, a calm heart brings health. A calm heart brings health. You know, there are people every day that look at their neighbors or look at their fellow employees or whatever and are jealous uh, and, and trying to get more than they have. It's not fair, all that kind of, you've heard of all this stuff. So uh, the scripture tells us that person, uh, his bones rot. He's, he's focused on one thing. Uh, the heart that seeks after God is not jealous. That's the beginning of the verse. The tranquil heart is not jealous. Um, and the tranquility doesn't cause st stress. The person who is seeking after God is not all stressed out. They're calm, and so they are healthier. Proverbs 23, 7, and I'll read it from the New King James because it's a little bit clearer, I believe. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. And so the calm heart will bring health. The one who is agitated, the one who's the liar, the one who's jealous, the one who's envious, that's going to bring uh, struggles and pain. Number seven is Proverbs 15, 13. A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is crushed. So number seven, a glad heart is evident to others, is evident to others. So when our spirit is right, it is evident to other people that our heart is right and we don't live in such a stress-free or we don't live in such a stress-filled environment. We actually live in a stress-free environment because uh, we, our spirit is not crushed. But when people automatically look at us and see the anger and the, and the bitterness on our faces because that's what's in our heart, 
they immediately go into the protection mode because they feel that they're going to have to protect themselves from you. Uh, and, of course, that's stress, and stress is never healthy. Proverbs 15, 15 goes on and says, The cheerful of heart has a continual feast. In other words, a celebration. And so a gl glad heart is evident to others. Number eight, Proverbs 15, 30. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and good news refreshes the bones. A the word there, refreshes the bones, means to make fat. In other words, makes you healthy. So a good environment, number eight, encourages health. And so, you know, our environment that we live in, I'm not talking about the, you know, the fallout from the whatever, and I'm not talking about uh, global warming and all that. I'm talking about the environment that you live in as a person. Um, if there's constant struggles in your environment at work, if there's constant battles at home, if there's constant battles every place you go, that environment does not, does not encourage healthiness. Uh, the positive environment is much more healthy uh, than a negative one. And, you know, sometimes I've seen couples who just really do nothing but fight, and I think to myself, that must be extremely terrible to live with every day in your house when you know that it's just going to be a continual battle. I've worked with people who are never happy. You've met those people. That environment they live in does not encourage healthiness. It actually encourages uh, sickness or, or, or stress and all that goes along with that. So number nine is Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and healthy to the body. Number nine, words affect our health. Words affect our health. Now, you all, every one of us in this room have had heard that little thing, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I got to tell you, that's a lie. Okay, that is not true. It's absolutely not true. It sounds really nice, and probably our parents taught us to, that so we didn't get in trouble at school, but it, it isn't true. Words do affect our health. Uh, there are people that spend hours and hours watching the news. And they live totally stressed out because the words they hear coming from the television or the words they hear coming from the radio. Uh, there are people who live in the environment. We're talking about the environment you live in in verse number eight. We, we, people live in an environment where there's constant chaos and anger and so on and so forth. Those words are going to affect your health. Uh, the Bible says gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and healthy to the body. How we speak and how we uh, are around, the people we're around, how they speak, has an effect on our health. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22, he wrote, My son, be attentive to my words. Listen to what I'm telling you, he says. Incline your ear to what I'm saying. Verse 21, let them not escape from your sight. Keep them, from within, your, keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them in healing to all their flesh. Throughout Scripture, we find that when you see the Bible, the Word of God referred to, often it's referred to as, a, as an instrument of healing or of blessing because the Word of God has that power. But so do our words have power. And we need to be careful not only what words we speak, but what words we allow to be taken into our mind. Proverbs 17, 22, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Number 10 is a right attitude is healthy for us. A right attitude. You know, your attitude is totally under your control. Your attitude is under your control. You can have a bad attitude. You can have a good attitude. It's totally under your control. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs 17 that a joyful heart is good medicine. When our attitude is right, it's good for us. But when our attitude is wrong, a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Uh, a, it's interesting. A bad attitude kills us from the inside out. Think about that. A bad attitude kills us from the inside out. On the other hand, a joyful heart grows us or heals us from the inside out. And so our right, a right attitude is healthy for us. You know, I see people who complain constantly. There, there's two things I want you to think about when you complain about something, okay? First of all is, can I 
do anything to change this? And if the answer is no, then you need to stop complaining. Okay, that's the first thing. Can I do anything uh, to change this? And the second thing is, is my complaining making this better or worse? In most cases, our complaining makes it worse. And so we need to stop it. Uh, there's reason to complain. There's reason to talk to the right people when you're complaining. But uh, a healthy attitude goes a long ways towards keeping us physically good, but also spiritually healthy. Proverbs 18, 14. A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit can who can bear? It's interesting. Solomon says here that your um, that your those around you affect your health. Your friends affect your health. Health. A man's spirit will endure sickness. Okay, but a crushed spirit. When you are with people or who are or around people who are constantly crushing you, putting you down, belittling you, making fun of you, and so on and so forth. Uh, it, it crushes your spirit. After, all, after a while, you just can't deal with it anymore. But a man's spirit will, uh, 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 will endure sickness uh, if uh, he has those around him that are encouraging him and building him up and strengthening him. So number 11, your friends affect your health. By the way, there's a number of verses throughout Proverbs that talks about friends. And just, you know, uh, sometimes uh, our biggest problem is who we hang out with. It really is because we hang out with people who bring us down, not build us up. My dad used to tell us every year we got ready to start a new school year. Find people who will pick you up, encourage you. Don't find people who are going to drag you down. And, you know, the people that are going to drag you down will be want to be your friends because they don't have any. Uh, we need to be around people who encourage us and build us up. That's why uh, it is so important that we have church. That's why it's so important that we have fellowship together as believers because we can encourage one another. Proverbs 25, 16. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you, lest you have your fill of it and vomit. Number 12, eating habits affect our health. Eating habits affect our health. So he tells us right here in the scripture, overeating has many issues. And uh, of course, the one he lists here is you're going to throw up, vomit. But we all know that eating the wrong stuff and eating too much stuff on a continual basis uh, can make us very sick. Actually, uh, there have been people known to eat themselves to death because of eating uh, too much. So uh, our eating habits affect our health. And you say, I never thought that was in the Bible. Well, it's right there. Uh, eat enough of you lest you have a fill of it and vomit. So hey, we're warned uh, about our eating habits. And I'm not saying you have to go out and, you know, have all organic stuff or whatever like that. But uh, it's, it's more about how much of whatever we eat. You know, there's very few things that aren't good for us uh, if we, we eat it in the right uh, amounts. That's the problem sometimes. It looks too good or it smells too good. Uh, I made chili today and made homemade bread. My house smells really good. So it, it's hard not to overeat. <laughs> so any questions? Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you tonight for the opportunity we have to study your word. Thank you, Lord, uh, that Proverbs, uh, even in just the 12 weeks we've looked at it, have taught us so many things about our lives and tonight about our health. Lord, may we spend time in the book of Proverbs. May we grow uh, in the knowledge of what Solomon wrote many years ago because he was the wisest man according to Scripture. Lord, tonight as we... Uh, as we head towards our business meeting, may you be honored and glorified, and we thank you for each one that's here in Jesus' name. Amen.